Hey everyone, my name's Steve. Welcome back to my workshop and today we are diving into more laser fun with the Comgo, Comgo Z1. It is a 10 watt diode laser that was sent to me and uh, I've been running with it for the past couple of weeks. We're going to go dive into it in this video and I will let you know what my thoughts are on this one as far as a budget laser that might be perfect for your workshop. So if that's something that interests you, stay tuned. We're going to jump right into it. So Comic Girl reached out to me and asked if I was interested in checking out their laser. Uh, I'm not affiliated with them, they do not pay me to say anything, um, they just ask that I provide an honest review. And so that's what we're doing today. I've been using the laser for the past couple of weeks and uh, I've got some good use out of it and I uh, want to share my thoughts and ideas on it uh, with you today. So let's jump into some of the general specs and the features. Uh, it does have a working area of 400 millimeters squared or 15 and 3 quarters inch squared. Uh, so that's the actual interior working area of the laser. Uh, the machine itself is just a little bit bigger than that, but not by much. Uh, it does have a focused spot diameter of 0 0.08 by 0 0.08 millimeters. So being a dial laser, it is more of a square uh, focus point rather than round. Um, but having it be actually truly square instead of rectangular can actually help out in uh, some of your cutting features and uh, if you want to get uh, consistent. Um, lines both vertically and horizontally. And then uh, as far as control software this does support the popular Laser GRBL which is open source and free or my personal favorite Lightburn which is uh, available at a small additional cost. Some of the extra features on this laser it does feature dual y-axis stepper motors that can help the uh, gantry running smoother. Uh, it has a 105 millimeter or about a four inch travel on the Z axis and so that's not powered that's a manual adjustment but it gives you a wide range of travel without having to block up the laser itself when working with larger objects. It's great to see more use of 20 by 40 extrusion. It uses it on both the front and back rails as well as the gantry rail as well. That provides more contact area between plates and bars. Uh, it just helps the machine stay uh, more rigid and more square. And this machine does feature limit switches, which can help with providing a consistent, reliable homing, uh, which allows you to uh, do better work with jigs and repeatable cuts, uh, as well as restarting a job uh, after having an issue. Some of the safety features of this laser, it does come with a set of green laser glasses. Now there is no rating on here, so I can't speak to uh, how effective they are with this, um, but they are included and you should always wear these whenever possible um, because if you're, especially if you're working on reflective material, you could have uh, that laser light reflect back. And if you get that in your eyes, it can do some serious damage. So think safely, wear these or get a better pair um, that works for you. Uh, it does have a safety tilt feature. This is where if it detects a tilt of about 20 degrees or more, it will turn off the laser and stop the movement of the motors. Uh, and then it does include an acrylic shroud around the head. It also funnels the air down to help uh, keep the laser head clean while keeping the light hopefully contained to the cutting and working area. Uh, I'm not going to go over the whole build in this uh, video. There are plenty of good videos in the, out there. The manual does walk through the build pretty well. I'm just going to speak to a few of the th concerns I had with it. Uh, the wheels, the V-slot wheels that uh, match up to the extrusion, uh, they're smaller than your typical. These measured about 15 millimeters in diameter, uh, whereas your typical uh, 3D printer, laser, uh, CNC router use more of a 24 millimeter V-slot wheel. So I, I don't know why they went with the smaller ones. Um, I don't, I'm not overly concerned about it because this isn't moving as fast, isn't working at as much debris. And as long as you keep them cleaned uh, with some, uh, you know, wipe them down with paper towels and alcohol every so often, um, that should keep them operating for quite some time. The cable management is decent. They do provide wire loom uh, to kind of contain them all together, but they aren't routed in many more places. They do provide one uh, plastic clip that uh, helps secure. Uh, one spot of the, the cable management as it comes around to the Y gantry, but um, this is typical of these open frame dialed lasers is they just kind of tight, but gather them together in those wire looms and uh, maybe zip time to a couple of locations. It works, uh, it would just be nice to have a little more proactive cable management. Um, one thing that I've found both good and bad is it has four thumb screws for uh, securing the laser module onto the gantry and you need to adjust those based on the depth of your material and where you need to focus the laser beam on. And so you need to loosen up four thumb screws, move the laser head 
and uh, then tighten them back up. And a lot of lasers in this class, they have one set screw, uh, one knob, something to turn. Um, this has four, and so that just takes a little bit of extra time, a little bit of extra effort. Um, however, it also secures it better. Um, it's not uh, relying on just one screw to hold that up. So I believe they've addressed this in some of their live streams that they're working on a different design for that. So that'll be great to see in the future. And again, this is not a deal breaker by any means. It actually, in some cases, is a plus in that it captures that laser head module a little more securely. And then finally, speaking of focusing, uh, there was no focusing tool included with this laser. Um, they do give you the measurements to say, and so on the 10 watt version, you do need to uh, put a distance of seven millimeters between the shroud and the surface of your material to have it focused on the surface of your material. Um, most of the other lasers I've worked with either have some sort of built-in uh, measuring device or a plate or bar that's set to the, the distance and you can use that. I had to uh, basically create my own and uh, since it is seven millimeters, which is just over a quarter inch, I took some quarter inch stock of wood. I uh, then laminated a piece of gift card plastic on top of it and then just sanded it down, checking with my um, with a ruler to get it to seven millimeters. And that's been working great. Um, so it's, it's not difficult to do, but it would be great to just have a nice little focus tool, focus block included with this laser. So uh, that's kind of the specs, features, and any of my build concerns. Let's jump into looking at what I was able to do with this laser and uh, how it performed. All right, every time I uh, get a new laser or I get a new material, uh, the thing that I do is I'm going to run a, uh, at very minimum, you're gonna run a um, power and speed test. Uh, and so like I say, this should be done on any ma new material you're working with. And all this is doing is uh, testing your material and your laser at various speeds, graduated speeds and graduated powers to really dial in what is the best um, setting for whether you're cutting, engraving, and that material. And just to kind of show this off a little bit, this is an eighth inch um, hobby grade plywood. And as you see, it actually, even at uh, 600 millimeters a minute and 100% power, it was able to cut through. Um, and in some of these cases, I just had to push through just a little bit lightly. Um, but you, you see that it uh, had a wide range of abilities to cut through on that. Well, same thickness plywood, but in a Baltic birch variety, um, it barely cut through at uh, 300 millimeters a minute in 190 to 100% power. So um, this is why you can't just say, hey, I'm cutting with quarter inch material or eighth inch material. Um, what do my settings need to be? Um, the various types of plywood, this is both eighth inch, three millimeter plywood, um, completely different settings. So um, now they claim that uh, this can cut through uh, thicker wood as well. And again, that's gonna depend on the type of wood. So uh, I grabbed some uh, some cedar wood. This now, this is more, more of a softer wood. And uh, at 100% power and six millimeters a second or 300 millimeters a minute, 360 millimeters a minute, uh, it took five passes, but we were able to cut through this wood. Um, I don't have the other pieces, but it did get all the way through and it was uh, fairly clean. So yes, you can cut through thicker wood, but if this was a chunk of plywood, I guarantee it would have taken a lot more than five passes and it still may have not gotten all the way through because when this came through, you can kind of just see there are a couple of sections there, so focus, where there's little nibs that actually still caught that didn't cut through. So again, uh, don't just uh, count on that quarter inch wood. It's gonna be able to cut through anything. It's gonna vary on what you can do but it's good to find out kind of the limits of what each machine can do and how well it does it. That's on one end of the spectrum. The other end of the spectrum is paper. Um, we were able to cut out a snowflake out of typical copy paper and uh, came out very smooth. Um, just a couple of spots where the perforations didn't quite burn through, but um, quickly pops out. Um, so you can easily use this to uh, make some fun decorations out of that. Uh, and then uh, heavier cardstock. This is, I think, 196 weight um, cardstock. Uh, this was uh, 20 millimeters a second at 50% power on the cutout side. Over here, you see there's one that just didn't quite make it through, and that was just 40% uh, power. So you see where a 10% difference in power um, can make all the difference in cutting. And just for fun, I was able to also cut through 
blue white paper didn't seem to make a difference so you know using this thing for cutting out cardstock making uh, patterns and diagrams um, layered artwork uh, totally possible with one of these um, after dialing in the cutting on some of that eighth inch material I wanted to play around with uh, seeing how well it would do in some fine cutting and mixing some engraving so I made this multi-layered um, state kind of decoration so this is three layers of wood. The bottom one is a solid piece. The top one then has the tree outline, and then the or the middle one has the tree outline, and then the top one has the Minnesota letters cut out on the bottom there. And so, um, you know, this uh, was all done in Lightburn with the design, um, you know, imported a vector of the state, and then uh, some vectors of trees, and mixed it all together, and you have a kind of a fun decoration. Um, but I was really impressed with if you can see that it actually got the pretty tight details along those trees, and. Uh, cut out the, the Minnesota very clean. Now what would probably improve this and they just recently came out with is air assist. Um, I did get some overburn um, and then on this thinner material um, with the width uh, it's, it's hard to clean up so you'll see there's there's just a little bit of overburn that sometimes you can clean up with a little bit of uh, uh, you know some alcohol or you know sanding it off but if you can prevent it from happening in the first place that works out well and that's where an air assist would be great and so they recently came out with one after I got my laser I'm uh, gonna hopefully get one in and uh, give it a shot and see how it could improve the cuts as well speaking to the repeatability I did want to run a test running the limit switches and seeing how it could um, uh, come back to its location again and cut in the same spot and so I ran a test where I uh, set the material in the center um, put a simple uh, object in the middle and had it run over it and then I'd manually move it out of the way have it rehome reset um, and then uh, have it run that again and I ran that I did that about five or six times in a row and uh, it all but one and I think that one was just a fluke they all ran in the same location now where this machine really shines is engraving and um, again I did uh, I did the tests to uh, the, the, the speed test to see where my settings should be and ran this file. This is on uh, just some thin uh, 16th inch uh, plywood. And this was run, this took about 45 minutes, about a four inch square piece. And uh, it uh, was ran at 3,000 3, millimeters a minute, 40% power, and it came out really well. And this is where these dial lasers really shine over the CO2 lasers, is that they can get some really fine detail in the engravings. They're not super fast about it, but with that 0 0.08 by 0 0.08 millimeter uh, focal point, that's where you're gonna get some really fine detail. And I even tried running this on what's called the Norton white tile method, uh, where you paint a white tile and then uh, because of the titanium dioxide in it, uh, it actually fuses to the tile. And so we ran another test here and you can really kind of start seeing the detail. I was a little disappointed I wasn't quite getting the blacks as black as I wanted on these. So I'm gonna do a little more testing to see if um, I can adjust the power or maybe use a different type of paint or uh, even straight mix some titanium dioxide um, to get some better results. But um, that's just part of this is learning uh, the, the techniques and then also how it applies to your individual laser. So, uh, and then uh, you can graduate up into you know, creating custom gifts. This is a uh, bottle opener. It doesn't have quite the insert in it yet, but you know, this was engraved uh, on this laser. And then uh, we recently had the 4th of July here in the US and uh, we I engraved this uh, coated aluminum with this flag. If it'll focus on that, it doesn't necessarily want to, but you can, uh, this is an anodized aluminum and what it does is it burns through anodization and uh, brings out your image as well. So. Uh, a lot of fun things that we were able to do with this laser. Um, like I said, I've been running it for the past couple weeks, just seeing what all I can do with it and uh, really having a lot of fun with it. Uh, I'm not done with it by any means. I want to be testing this out with more materials and using it in some future projects. So uh, definitely stay tuned for more of that. If you want to find out more about this laser, uh, I'll have links down below where you can uh, get connected with their Facebook groups. You can check them out on Amazon or direct on their website. And uh, some of the links will be affiliate links. They help me out. I appreciate that, but no pressure at all. Um, this is just my overview of this laser, what I thought about it. And so if you have any questions or comments about this laser or anything else I've done in my workshop, please 
leave a comment down below, uh, reach out to me. I do try to get back to those as quickly as I can. And uh, we will be doing more with this laser and other lasers here on this channel, as well as all things in my workshop. And so I look forward to seeing you next time. And uh, in the meantime, get out in your workshop, have some fun, and we'll see you soon.